Notice the way I'm spinning it, I'm holding it away from you now. Now I'm going to change it and do it differently next. going this way and I'm going to redo the experiment changing the direction of rotation and then it will go the other way. Now the angular momentum is rotating like this is pointing here. Spin angular momentum is pointing like this. Torque is like this. And so the spin angular momentum is changing that chasing that torque. I'm the spin angular momentum, I'm the torque. This is the torque. It's chasing it. I had this in my right hand. It's all right. Now I will. So when I spin it up, so let it first go around, which was. Roughly 10 seconds, what we calculated. And now I'm going to put two kilograms here at the end. Now you will see an instantaneous increase in the precession frequency. You see, it goes much faster now. Take it off. So let's try to figure out those terms. If I apply a force down on this side of the wheel, I create a torque. Now torque is force times the distance from the rotating axis, you can call it r. So torque is the force applied times the radius away from the turning axis. Now what's the direction of that torque? Well, we actually use a right-hand rule to define this. And so what you do is you put your fingers in the direction of the radius from the turning axis and curl them in the direction of the force and your thumb points in the direction of the torque. So the torque is actually out this way, at 90 degrees to the force. The force is down that way, but the torque vector is actually pointing out this way. So the angular momentum of this wheel is being increased in that direction. So the more I apply this torque, the more I increase the angular momentum of the wheel in the direction of the torque. So I'm making this wheel have a very large angular momentum out towards the camera, out towards you. Now before I go any further, let's have a look at this setup that I've got. I have a wheel here hanging from only one side by this rope. And so right now there's actually a torque on the whole system if I let go, because the weight of this wheel is pulling down, and that force is applied at this distance away from its pivoting point there. So if I let go, well, it does exactly what you'd expect. The wheel uh, swings down this way. But I want to see that as an example of rotational motion. There's a torque which is pointing out this way, which is trying to increase the angular momentum of the system in that direction. Now, angular momentum in that direction requires that the whole system starts swinging anti-clockwise. And so that is what happens. But what happens if I only let go after I've already spun up the bicycle wheel? Well, in that case, the bicycle wheel would already have angular momentum this way, and so a torque pushing that way actually swings this angular momentum around. Okay, so let me try to get the wheel spinning and make it work. Come on. Oh, look at that. It's rotating as we predicted. See, the angular momentum vector is pointing out this way, but torque is pushing it this way. So angular momentum, torque, and torque is pushing that angular momentum vector around. Except not for long because... Lifting that up. 